unemployment stuck above 9% and a double-dip recession increasingly likely, it may be hard for many Americans to believe that the worst could be yet to come. Nevertheless, we can already see the consequences of Washington's addiction to big government and bigger debt playing out in the very cradle of Western civilization, Greece. After its adoption of the euro in 2001, Greece took advantage of unusually low interest rates to borrow massive sums of money, funding unsustainable entitlement programs and mortgaging its economic future. The economy built over the next several years was a classic bubble. Crooked government accounting could only hide the exploding national debt for so long, and inevitably, the bubble burst. Greece has survived this far only thanks to bailouts from its wealthier, more prudent neighbors in the European Union. And in order to get the bailout money, Greece was forced to impose severe austerity measures, including higher taxes, massive layoffs, immediate cuts to retirees on Social Security, closing or merging nearly 2,000 schools, and selling airports, highways, and even islands. Meanwhile, the crisis has plunged Greece into a recession. With skyrocketing interest rates choking off investment, unemployment over 16%, and facing a loss of government services, many Greeks didn't take kindly to the proposals. Keep in mind, this was a crisis everyone knew was coming. Greece's political leaders accumulated debt they knew they could not pay back to pay for promises they knew they could not keep. Sound familiar? For decades, Washington has followed a similar path, accumulating more and more debt to pay for bigger and bigger government. Loose monetary policies, shady bookkeeping, and a debt-to-GDP ratio in excess of 100% have put us in the debt crisis red zone. Yet many in Washington still pretend all is well, just like the Greeks did. For years, Greece sped down the road to serfdom, ignoring the warning signs of history and economics. Now we are right behind them, blowing past the same warnings, speeding toward the same fate. There is still time to act. If serious reforms are implemented now, we still have the flexibility to phase them in gradually and not break promises to current and near beneficiaries of entitlement programs. We will not always have that flexibility. We know what needs to be done. The only question is whether Washington will have the courage to do it. 230 years ago, our founding fathers looked to the Greeks to learn how to create a democracy. Today, our generation must do the same, and quickly, to learn how to save one.